Hey, hey, uh, hey, if are you stabbed? Are you cut? Try a stab. Are you cut? Uh, are you cut? No, no, you don't want to go to hospital. <laughs> Hey, just he's got another one. Hey, hey, this guy's going out. You better get that ammo. Oh, and I looked up and I didn't get a message. And he said, I want a $69 American Express order. I get out the big Express order. He puts. The, he said, I'll take. He said, I'll take your money, like that, and it, forgive me for shaking. That's all right. You want to sit down? You better sit down. Forget about the story. That's all right. And um, so then he said, well, I'll take your other um, a paper or something, your other, other legal paper, you know. Yes. people in trouble. They are the special concern of the police emergency service. Three months we have followed two cops in patrol car 1509 through the streets of New York. Our microphones and cameras have recorded their actions. You will see New York in a jagged series of events of violence and crisis. This report is not for the squeamish. City, Times Square. Car 1509 Police Emergency Service moving against traffic in a race against death. Patrolman Mike Chadwick, his partner Gene Cochran. to a Broadway dance hall, a 60-year-old man suffers a heart attack. Two patrolmen of the emergency service work over him trying to find and revive a spark of life. These men are cops, but they are something more. This time the man is dead. The cops call them losers. New York is for winners. The unskilled, the untalented, the unbeautiful, the unlucky find trouble here. When the trouble is bad enough, Chadwick and Cochran have work to do. Mike Chadwick is 40 years old. He is married and has three children. He has been a police officer 14 years. Gene Corcoran, age 36, three children, a police officer nine years. Corcoran has five police medals, Chadwick has seven. I started in the building line as a laborer. It was good work, I liked it. Plenty of exercise, good work. I'd like to take the test for the police department. Well, I, I, I was going to take the test before I went in the Marines, but uh, I went in in February of 42, and the test didn't come up until April, so I missed it. If I would have taken the test, I would have had, uh, well, we had all the 20. Uh, did you always have that feeling that you wanted to be a policeman? Well, I either a, a 
replacement or a fireman. Yeah, your father was a fireman. Yeah, but, uh, my father and two of his brothers were firemen. I was the first cop in the family. Yeah, I'm the black sheep myself. I still have oh, one uncle in the fire have, department. We have no city employees. Uh, I'm the only city employee. No, I became uh, a policeman. My pop and two of his brothers were both firemen. One, yeah, one of them was killed up in Harlem in a fire. Oh, yeah? And the other one is still on. He works up in Bronx Telegraph. Uncle Buster, he used to be a uh, fighter before he went on a fire. 42nd he Street had, uh, Broadway, 1020 on the street, man struck it, by auto. Emergency car 1509 will also respond, Kate. Okay, Gene, let's go. Whip it around. Second Street and Broadway, the busiest corner in the world. A man has been hit by a car. A fender ornament has pierced his cheek. He is one of the 17,500 pedestrians run down each year in New York. What's your name? Martin. Martin? What's your first name, Martin? Dominic. Dominic? Dominic. Oh, Tommy Martin, huh? Dominic. Where do you live, Tommy? Well, don't touch your face, Tom. You got a bad cut. You know, right where we were, yeah, we were good. Huh? You're right where we were, we were good. You're okay. Uh, Tommy Martin, right? Where do you live, Tom? When a person in trouble finds himself in Mike Chadwick's hands, status, money, privilege are not considered. He treats them all alike. Corcoran has called for the ambulance. It's on its way. All right. Just pull it up and let it go. No, no, just stay right here. Yeah. All right, don't, don't rub it too much, huh? Okay? Uh, just keep your hands in the way. Okay, because I don't want the bandage. Okay, Don, come. gets the book work. Gene Cochran got into emergency through an act of bravery, saving a man and woman whose boat capsized off Coney Island in winter. He was dropped from a helicopter and kept them afloat until aid arrived an hour later. He spent the next three months in the hospital. Funny, I had no idea what I was going to do when I was, I was in that, you know, when you, got, when you get processed? Yeah. And it just came to me, I wanted to be a bank. I put banking on my discharge. Still on my discharge. You can look at my discharge. So I went home and I, I got a, I got a job as a teller trainee. I went to work the, I got home on a Thursday and I went to work Friday morning. You know, it was at the corn exchange. It was corn exchange then. As a teller trainee, and, and I worked my way up to. I was, well, not, not in that place, in that, in that bank. Uh, two different banks and worked my way up to head teller and from there uh, I took the test for the police department. I had, as long as I remembered I wanted to be a policeman and give it a go. Avenue, 10 and seven, steam leak. Steam leak. It can be a minor job or a catastrophe. <laughs>
Fifth Avenue and 43rd. Live steam tears through pipes beneath the streets of New York at 300 miles an hour. Pressure, 1,000 pounds per square inch. There are more than 50 people trapped in the stores behind the wall of steam. Chadwick has heard calls for help. A dozen people are trapped in the cellar. He will try to reach them and lead them up to Corcoran. I got a Turkish bag. What is your name? Oh, what's your name? Rose Schwartz. Oh, Rose geez. Schwartz? Yeah. And where do you live, Rose? <laughs> I can't talk. Oh. So I'm sorry. Take it easy. Just thank God you we're out. That's all. Yes, I'm Michael Angelo. How long were you in there? Uh, at least a half hour. Yeah, 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 yeah. 40, I don't know. 5.30 when I started. 5.30. What would you like now? Get me to the end. Seven ten p.m. All secure. The police emergency handles twenty five thousand six hundred calls a year. The twenty six patrol cars handle ninety percent of this business. For Chadwick and Corcoran, the evening has just begun. This tour of duty begins for Mike Chadwick in the mid-afternoon. From his house one hour away in the Bronx, he reports to Midtown headquarters for the 4 p.m. to midnight shift. Corcoran lives an hour away at the far end of Brooklyn. The men of the emergency squad are an elite group, skilled men who have shown bravery and fortitude. The waiting list of applicants is long. The selections are made by the boss, Chief Inspector Walter Klotzbach, 37 years in the division, a world authority in dealing with catastrophe. Chadwick is a typical selection. He is a skilled carpenter, mechanic, and practical engineer. He is expert in all police work, weapons, rigging, hydraulics, and making coffee. Men of the emergency division fly New York's five police helicopters. The 12 launches of the Harbor Patrol are piloted by these men who cover 578 miles of shorefront of the great city. For the next eight hours, car 1509 will speed Chadwick and Corcoran to the centers of action. In the ready room, Gene prepares his report forms for the day's work. Uh, 1509, K. 59th Street and 6th Avenue, 10-8, dangerous condition. Normally, the patrol car reports to its assigned pre-
precinct first, but action takes precedence. Central Park South, a 200-foot construction crane has buckled at the top, 23 stories above the street. wind of gale force with gusts up to 70 miles per hour. The problem, how to get the crane down without damage. Two weeks before, two pedestrians were killed by a boom that broke free. Chadwick and Cochran wear no hats. If a hat blows off, there may be a dangerous impulse to grab after it. The plan of action. Traffic is stopped below. Chadwick and Cochran direct the construction workers to lash the broken part of the boom. Then they give the orders. Lower away. PM. Car 1509 reports to its assigned precinct. For the next six and a half hours, it will be on patrol, responding to radio calls, looking for trouble. Patrolman Chadwick and Corcoran, emergency car 1509, sir. Corcoran, Chadwick, meal eight and six, ring at 30. Right, sir. On a typical day, the gamut of experience is wide. Some of it mechanical, much of it is routine, and sometimes it's just plain ridiculous. 536. New York is full of nuts. One of these left in a parked car, a lion. 551. Broken water line in a condemned building. automobile accident. A car mounted the sidewalk knocking over a traffic light. They cut off electricity, sealed the cable ends, and ordered the street hose down to wash away gasoline. A spark can be dangerous. 910. They arrest a man in a stolen car. 1005. Investigate reported prowler on roof. 15. Move derelict from dangerous construction site. 11.15. An average tour of duty. Chadwick and Corcoran like the four to midnights. It is the most active shift. Their wives have some reservations. She doesn't particularly care for it. God hates them, boy. She don't like them at all. I think they're the best tour to work, but the only thing is, uh, I like to see the kids. Yeah, I like it as a working tour. I like as it as a working tour, tour. It's terrific. Yeah. But uh, you figure you get home one o'clock, one thirty in the morning. Yeah. You sleep until nine. The kids are gone to school. You leave at two thirty or so. The kids don't go home to school until three in the afternoon, and you're already gone. So for five days, you don't see them. 
when I'm doing a set of four to twelve, sometimes I don't see Mike and uh, seven, three, five, ten, one to seven. What, while he's in school, the, for the whole set. Let's say with me. Freddie, I see, and uh, Tommy's going to school now, and you're not. Yeah. yeah. What's the union office? Forty-one East Forty Sixth Street. Signal ten thirty. Armed robbery in progress. Emergency car fifteen oh nine will also respond. Kate. Okay, Gene, let's go. Armed robbery is an all-out call. Every car in range responds at top speed. No hat. And he had black hair. Black hair. Dark hair. Italian type. I don't know. Please, I got nothing against Italian, but he was good-looking in Italian type. Yes. Like a fresh guy, you know? Yeah. Not real heavy, but heavy. Yeah. I mean, I was looking like what a nice-looking guy. Sure. Oh, yeah, yeah everything, sure. everything, but I don't remember yeah. what color. Oh, he said he did. He went oh, like, sure. well, like, like this. He said he had it, yeah. Excuse sure. me, I don't mean that you, but like this, underneath this black in his pocket. You know what? Uh, and let's see, what, what can I tell you? Oh, so all he took was what money I had in the safe, which wasn't much because I was getting it ready for deposit. I deposit it all the time. and. Uh, uh, the book for American Express check. He said, grab the other ones, and I and I fumbled around, and he ran as I was oh, fumbling. Oh, younger than I am. Yeah, well, that's about 16, right? <laughs> 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 Thank you for making me laugh. <laughs> no. Hold on over there. And to think I have oodles of diamonds that I don't, don't have on. Hey, Boy. We were sitting and saying how dull it was. And then I got an RQ, which would mean I had, a re had to do a message over and I was glad to get it. He, he, like, he went, like there was a car there, like he went up toward the street or to the hotel. And I don't know more than that. Because, no, no, wait, no, what I did was he said, now I want the other rest, like that. And so I fumbled around in here. Wait, I'll show you. First of all, the thing was over here. White man? Oh, yeah. Very, yeah. Uh, I, 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 oh, I don't know. I'm sure it's the post. <laughs> anyway, so a very good looking fellow. And I looked up and I was sending a message. And he said, I want a $69 American Express order. I get out the big Express order. He puts, the, he said, I'll take, he said, I'll take your money like that. And it, forgive me for shaking. That's all. You want to sit down? You better and, sit down. Forget about the story. That's all. And um, so then he said, well, I'll take your other um, a paper or something, your other, other legal paper, you know. Yes. Well, I know what that, that's this business. But I was, like, nervous, you know, and I fumbled around for it. And so he, he only took the big, he had it, like, in his pocket. And so he kept his hand in his pocket. Yeah, like he holds all his raincoat up, you know, like this. I see. In, the, you know? in other words, as if he had a yeah. gun like this. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, what is all? That's all right. Don't worry about it. What is your name, ma'am? Frances Kaiser. Ruth what, ma'am? No, that's my sister, Frances Kaiser. Frances Kaiser, how do you spell it? K-I-Z-E-R-E. K-I-Z-E-R-E. -E. Yeah. Oh.
Death in its most violent form is part of the daily life of Chadwick and Corcoran. This is the subway at 53rd Street. A man has jumped or fallen under the train. The train has to be jacked up to get him out. This is the job of the police emergency service. I'll move the light up. Want to hold the light? Now the case comes oh. off. Get it in a minute. That's it. Now Mr. Mount open this rail. Watch out. Each year about a hundred people fall under subway trains in New York. Two-thirds of them are killed. This man died three days later. people kill themselves each year in New York. About 165 attempted by jumping from high places. Of these, 110 do fulfill their death wish. The 55 who are forced or persuaded to give life another chance are the special charges of the emergency squad. This man is a jumper. No one knows what oppressions have driven him to this action, but they have been important enough to send him 300 feet up on the Queensboro Bridge, seeking the quick way down. The emergency service cops attempt to trap the man force him over the area where they have spread special nets. Jumpers often show a fear and hatred of uniforms. The cops wear coveralls. From here, the man will go to the Bellevue Psycho Ward for examination. Another day, another bridge. Pier 22, a body reported floating in the East River. Another one of the 200 to 300 corpses Chadwick and Cochran must handle each year. The body has floated under the pier. The harbor patrol boat has been called. A dead person is taken from the waters surrounding the city two or three times a week, year after year. giggle in the face of death.
The body has been in the water two weeks, it is estimated. No one knows how it got there. Was the man pushed? Did he fall? Was he killed or hurt and then thrown in? Was it a work accident or another suicide? into this man's life will now be made. His effects will be turned over to the detectives. The morgue will perform an autopsy to find out how he died, and the work will begin to find some answers to this mortal question. Who is this man? What happened to him? is prepared. It takes strong control to do this kind of work. Precinct policemen will stay and guard the body until the morgue truck comes to pick it up. End of shift. Chadwick and Corcoran come off duty. There's the inevitable cup of coffee and a few minutes to let the memories of the day's work slide away before they start home to their wives and children. And, uh, you remember that case that we had with him? We had a, a hearing in the room and he followed us in here. Walter Raskin had a premature baby the other night. He did, huh? In the washroom of the Horn and Hardits, a newly born infant. Abandoned. Abandoned. Oh, that, that it was, was abandoned. That's abandoned. That's right. That was in a paper the other day, six, uh, uh, Manager, a pound baby or something? 46th Street. Yeah. The manager walked in and found the, uh, or a woman came up and yeah. told the manager and he went into the ladies' room and he found this baby uh, in the, the room there and he uh, wrapped it up in uh, one of these white jackets that they use in the horn and all that, white I guess for warmth, and then he called right away and asked you and Hanson, were right around the corner. They got there and the baby was, uh, seemed to be breathing all right, they checked, they cleared his throat and all the, the mucus and stuff that was in. And uh, they had waited, they put a couple of calls in for an ambulance, but you know how it is, you wait, it's only minutes, yeah. but sometimes it seems like hours, so they did take the baby down to Grand, Grand Central. Central yeah, yeah, the doctor examined her and sent them off to Bellevue, so the baby's okay. Okay, good. Yeah, it's left right in the washroom. And when you think of these cases in the hospitals, where with all the medical attention <laughs> and everything else, yeah. the, uh, they lose babies, and here's yeah. a baby born in a... You wait 12 years for one, and people are leaving them in the stores. 15. Right? People can't have 15. Women, huh? 15. How's your baby, Mike? Fine. Nine, six now. It's almost yeah. double the one. It's five, two. 11 weeks old, and it's nine, six. Yeah. You waited a long time for that one, Mike, yeah. huh? Yeah. You weren't quite as lucky as some of us fellas at this yeah. table are, Mike, huh? Yeah, huh? <laughs> I'll wait a long time. What do you got, nine now, pal? No, pal, huh? eight. Eight? Yes, sir. Eight, huh? I mean, you got Charlie. Seven, he passed me by, eh? Yeah. I told a lot of these fellows, you can pass me by, I'll be a son of a gun if they didn't, too. How many, Gene? Oh, three. 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 I have three, I have two adapted. Mike, he's nine, and Freddie's, uh, Freddie would be four in January. Mm -hmm. What do you think that new fellow he got? Nine. Oh, he got yeah. right in and tapped all of us. I saw a case one time, Bill Garrett and myself were, uh... When they go home to their families, they don't talk much about the day they've had. They go home to a different world. Now they will face the problems of raising children, the difficulties of meeting bills on a cop's salary, and the inevitable fears of wives who know their husbands do dangerous work. She wasn't even admitted to the hospital. They gave her the shots and the asthma passed. I think the asthmatic.
Pennsylvania Station, evening rush hour. The Kodiak fights for his life while the city goes its way around him. If Chadwick and Cochran reach a cardiac victim while he is still breathing, chances are better than 100 to 1 that they will get him to the hospital alive. No, he's feeling a lot better. This victim was ash-colored when they arrived. The oxygen has fed his blood. The man will live. He's a winner. Mike and Gene reached him in time. This night has begun well. A life has been saved. 721, flooded cellar threatens new building at Lincoln Square. 915, Chadwick finds the cutoff valve. 930, investigate burglar alarm. False alarm. 945, this man has had a drink. You know where, which way 36th Street is? Yeah. Which way? Where? No, it's down this way. 1016. Open trunk of stolen car. Body suspected inside. No body, only Chadwick. 1042. This cat has bitten a child. The ASPCA must test it for rabies. 1157. Over the years, Mike and Jean get to know the night people. This is Mrs. Durante. She is nearly 80. Mike has helped her with these bags many times. They contain food for the neighborhood cats and pigeons given to her by the local butchers and grocers. Mrs. Durante is furious. Someone tried to take the food away from a stray cat she was feeding. Take it from the wild because it was a black and white cat. The only one left there. I said, I was drinking it, and he, he says, he didn't do such a wonderful thing, I says, to, 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 to the milk, I think they milk away. I says, but the poor animals, they haven't got nobody to defend them. I said, they should have somebody to take care of them. And sure. then look at that, I says, the milk right in the middle of the street, took it away from the mouth of the cat. He says, he's a monster. I said, he's a tyrant. I said, he's no good. I said, why don't you give him a ticket? Tell him to, uh, he killed other cats. I was terrible in my head. I got my temper up, you know, and gave it to him so bad that you haven't got no idea. He waited for me until I got there. And then he did it after he got there. Yeah, well, he, he was waiting, right but he didn't know that I, I always wait until he's not there. Time for dinner. They rarely take their full dinner break. Only one leaves the car at a time, and a blast of the siren will bring him out on the run. How are you? Fine, good. Uh, could I have a ham and uh, tomato with a little mayonnaise? Huh? And uh, how about a hot sausage uh, with uh, peppers? Put some peppers? All right, uh, you sprinkle some of this here on, huh? All right. Is this going out? Yeah, this is going out, right. Looks good. Yeah. All right. And then put a little mayonnaise. Yeah, a little mayonnaise on that, right? Now what else? And uh, one uh, sausage with peppers, huh? 
and I sprinkle a little of this hot stuff on it. All right. My partner's putting a summons on your car outside. With the push car? Yeah, the push car. The car, yeah. Okay, let's go. Okay, that's all there. Hey, uh, Take everything out of here? Yeah, the two sandwiches, not the whole store, just the two sandwiches. Mm -hmm. Oh, my. Okay, thank you very much. They eat in the car, radio on, motor running. About half the time they get a call before they're finished. You went to school on the farm, didn't you? Yeah, I lived upstate for seven years. I went. Uh, I started school up there. I went to gram, uh, grammar school up there. Uh, I went up there in 1927, and I moved back around 35. Uh, it was January 1st, 1935, I moved back to the city. Oh, yeah? Yeah, when my pop got out of the fire department, he bought this farm upstate. And it wasn't much of a farm. He didn't know anything about it. He got stuck. It was a 100-acre farm. Uh, we went up there the first year we was up there, the barn fell down during a snowstorm, had nothing. Oh, yeah. So we used to grow our own vegetables. We had one cow and we had four horses. We needed four horses like we needed a hole in the head. What'd you have, uh, what'd you plant? Oh, we, well, uh, most of the stuff that we planted was just for our own use. We, oh, you uh, didn't chuck anything? No, no, we uh, raised quite a few chickens. We had about 500 chickens. We used to sell eggs but, and chickens we used to also with a, uh, one man used to come around, buy the chickens, buy the eggs, but uh, as far as the vegetables and stuff like that, the only thing we grew was just for our own consumption, we never uh, went in for truck farm. The farm wasn't that good anyway, the ground was pretty dead, it wasn't a good I, farm. I just go to school up there. Uh, well, regular rural school? Yeah, we had one at, uh, uh, school I started in was one of these little uh, one-room schoolhouse. It wasn't far. We used to be able to walk there, and I went to my pop used to take us. Uh, and I went there, we used to have to go with uh, a horse and sleigh, but it was funny, you know, there was about 17 kids in the school, and six of the 17 were Chadwick's. What they do, the name of Chadwick Junior High? <laughs> Yeah, I lived upstate for a while. Hey, you lived in Port Java. 25th Street and 8th Avenue at a bar and grill, signal 1032, a fight. Okay, let's go. Emergency car 1509 will also respond. Results need work. As they always do, Mike and Gene go directly to the heart of the situation. There is only one thing of primary importance now. This is arterial bleeding. Are you cut? Are you cut? Uh, Are you cut? Uh, so you don't want to go to hospital? <laughs> hey, just keep going. I don't know. Hey, hey, this guy's going out. You better get that ambulance. <laughs> <out. laughs> <laughs> don't you move. Don't you move. No, 
What was it all about, Johnny? They, they making trouble over the house. I'm a super in the house, and they throw What number? Making trouble. 274. 274? Yeah. You're the super there? Yes, sir. Uh, these guys went toward, uh, it's the same ones when we were coming down. Yeah, they're acting towards 21st Street, I think, huh? You've never seen them before. No, sir. Oh, Coyote, that's what you want. Coyote, that's what you want. What's your name? Fernando Navarro. How old are you? 21. What do you mean? What's your name? You married? No. Yes. Description of this guy. Well, then he was uh, male. Yeah, male. He was uh, Puerto Rican. Puerto Rican, yeah. Dark skin. Dark skin. A crispy hair. Greasy hair. Crispy, you know, uh, crispy. red hair, yeah. What color hair? No, crispy hair. Yeah. You got to like up like this. Oh, right? yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Kinky hair. Kinky hair. Right. What color? Black? Yeah, black. About how tall? <laughs> About the same like me. How tall? Uh, get some water here. You got some fresh I mean, water. You got a glass of fresh water over there, fellas. Excuse me. What were you doing in the cellar over here? What were you doing in the cellar over here? I just went down there. And everything happened. And I just stopped and I just went down there. Why did you run in here? Because it was the only place. I see. It didn't start in here then? No, sir. Oh, yeah. I just came in and then everybody rushed after me. I see. It didn't happen in here. It just ran in here. Did you bring a pad with you? Hey? Can I have a pad with you? Yeah, you, you want a cigarette? Yeah. Hey, John. <laughs> you got one, change. No words are as eloquent as action. In the way a pair of hands touches a person in pain, in a simple giving of a cigarette, a kind of man is revealed. Chadwick and Corcoran perform their difficult, dirty, dangerous jobs because it is their duty. Men on the outside are paid highly for skills such as theirs, but they have chosen this duty because of the kind of men they are. What do they get in return? Not much money, but they sleep well, and they never wonder why they are here on this earth. Emergency car 1509 to Central K. Proceed 1509. Emergency car 1509, 1018 from uh, 25th Street and 8th Avenue. That was one male, St. Vincent's K. Good boy.